I... Wow, what a piece of junk. Hey everyone, so in this video I want to take a look at this uh, VHS DVD combo. And I got this at a local Goodwill and it was about $10, $9.99. And it says VCR don't work, DVD only. No remote, and I don't even think this thing records. Yeah, so if we look, yeah, there's no inputs on this. So it is truly just a player. So let's take a look. I haven't even um, tried it. I don't want to try anything like this uh, without the cover off because if it eats the tape, I want to be able to, you know, keep an eye on it and you know, unplug it if need be. All right, so let's take a look in there. Uh, it's actually looking pretty good. It's not very dirty. It's very basic. If you've ever taken apart a, v, you know, like a VHS VCR from early 90s, uh, even in the 80s, it's much more complex, uh, much more, you know, heavy duty. But it is what it is. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see if it works. It could be just that the uh, the guy at Goodwill or the person at Goodwill who inspected it just didn't know what they were doing and had a hook to the to the wrong output. We'll see what happens. So let's turn it on. And it just turns off. And of course the camera refuses to absolutely, absolutely refuses to focus. Let's try this again. Turn it on. Let's see if we can just fast forward. It just keeps turning off. So is that a power supply issue, or is that some kind of... <laughs> Stay on. So that could be a problem with the power supply, or it could just be you know, tripping at safety and keeping it from eating the tape. Okay, well, I've seen enough. Let's actually, let's see what happens here. Yeah, this time it didn't even wind the tape up. So it might be a bad belt. So this is the main drive belt here. It's got some tension to it. Usually it's something of this age, or I don't even know when this was made, but anything that has a belt in it that's slipping, I mean, you, you can definitely tell. The other thing is... Yeah, see when we turn this, there's definitely some tension there. So something's not going right. Maybe the motor's not good any good. Let's try and all right. So I got it propped up now, make it a little easier for us both to see. So what I'm going to do is just I want to see if this motor turns at all because it might be a bad motor or a weak motor. So what I want to do is just move the carriage and have it drop in place, and then we're going to cover the emitter, the IR emitter, with. Uh, you know, piece of heat shrinking and see it as soon as I did that it's already it's already trying to go. So let's move this in. And drop that on quick. The motor's not even wanting to turn. And it turns off as usual. That's weird. It's turning.
Yeah, if I... So it's playing now. What gives? And now it's working. That makes... That's really weird. And I can put a pretty significant load on that motor, and it is really strong. Everything's working. Let's try this again. It's working. Let's fast forward. Play. FBI warning, I can hear audio. Well, kinda. It's that time of year. Yeah, it's working. Now the color looks terrible. Uh, I'm gonna guess that, the, that that's the capture card, because everything I plug through this looks terrible. Um, and I haven't really looked into figuring out why. So that's weird, so it's working. The only variable that I saw, let's kick this back out again. The only variable that I'm thinking of is, we tilted this up. So let's lay this back down. And it's playing. So that's really weird. Well, let's pull it apart anyway, just to see if there's anything under there. They don't even use connectors anymore. Everything's soldered right to the board, so you got to take the whole thing apart. What I want to get to is I want to get to the motor that's underneath here. I want to see how this looks. And I also want to look at the underside of this mechanism to make sure it's not dirty, that it's greased properly, uh, things like that. I also want to look for any bad caps. So this was not meant to be serviced whatsoever because there is a belt in there. And generally, the belts you want to have access to to replace. Well, in order to get to the belt, in order to replace it, you got to take this whole thing apart. The problem is everything is soldered. So you have the video head here. Video head goes down through a ribbon cable straight to the board. That's got to be desoldered. This is the audio head. And it looks like the erase head as well. And that also needs to be desoldered. The only saving grace is the LED that runs the emitter here. That's soldered right to the board, and that just goes up through a light pipe. So, I. Wow, what a piece of junk. I'm not desoldering all that stuff. There's no obvious blown caps. There's nothing leaking on the board, from what I can see. And that's good enough for me at this point. I'm not taking this whole thing apart. It's, this thing is just not worth it. If this was a nice VCR, then absolutely. But this thing is just a cheap piece of shit. Here's the belt. Lubricant actually is, is the grease is, is fine. 
Because generally what you get is, in as they get older, the, the grease gets a lot of dirt in it, and it just winds up getting really gummy. This is actually perfect. The motor spins nice and free. There's no hang-ups. That's working. There's a clutch to it, and it feels like the clutch is nice and tight. I'm just starting to think that it just uh, was never used. And as cheap as this is, so what I'll do is I'll get it back together again, or I'll try to, and clean out all this all this uh, grease off. Even though it still feels okay, it's squeaking up here, so maybe I'll add a little bit of the grease up here and I can get to some of the gears underneath of it and I'll add some grease to them and then we'll just run it back and forth and exercise it and hope for the best and see what happens then I'm gonna let this sit for a couple days and then come back to it and see if it actually works again because this if it's gonna be an intermittent thing I don't trust it intermittent problems are the obviously the hardest to troubleshoot because it'll work one minute obviously the definition of intermittent but it'll work one minute and it won't work the next and just when you think you know it's it's doing pretty well and it's it's not acting up it'll cause problems and it's very hard to just really narrow down what the real problem is Okay, so I got it all back together, and uh, I think I figured out, figured out what the actual problem is, and it's so obvious I should have seen it in the first place, but I didn't. So you put the tape in, and I'll lift this up. You notice this piece here moves back and forth, and that's what engages different gears. That is driven by this motor over here with this belt. Now this belt actually has, let's eject this. This belt actually has a lot of tension to it, still. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's still good. As you can see. So it's been sitting for a while. And uh, you can see that this little piece at the top here is what went around this motor here. And it went around the bottom. So it's been sitting for a while. And... Uh, and the belt's hardened up a little bit. So be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up. And it's still got some pretty good tension to it. And it's still kind of springy. Um, let me see if I have anything on hand. No, I don't have any belts that'll... Well, maybe. I could put a smaller belt. It may not last as long, though. That's the problem, because it's much thinner. Actually, it's not going to last as long, but... Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt it. It's not going to be able to handle the load. So what I'm going to do with this is just use the boiling water method. I'm going to put it in some boiling water, let it sit, and uh, it'll soften the rubber up some and cause it to contract a bit. There it is. And I was going to put some rubbing alcohol on it, but I don't want to dry it out any more than it already is. And this is only a temporary fix. Um, some people say they get years out of it. I, uh, you know, I, I would rather just buy a new belt for it, being as cheap as they are. And for people asking about, you know, where to buy belts, well, it depends on the manufacturer. Sometimes you can go straight to Sony or whatever the manufacturer happens to be. Sony's very good about uh, selling parts, if they still have any new in stock. 
the easiest place I found was to just go to like eBay or Amazon and just type in your model number and belt. The other option is, like I always say, is um, I bought a lot of these are from a belt kit that I bought. It was about a hundred, just you know, various belt sizes. I think it was like ten dollars or something like that. It wasn't. It wasn't very, you know, expensive. All right, so let's give this a shot. We already know it works. Let's make sure it still works. So probably what happened was a combination of it just sitting, and the grease, you know, just hardening a little bit, plus the fact that this was slipping on this belt. And I'll plug in the video. I'm not going to plug in audio because, um, you know, the whole YouTube thing. It's actually looked a lot better than it did before. Before it had all kinds of color lines through it and everything else. Not working too bad. I wouldn't say it's the best picture I've ever seen, but it's actually not bad. Unfortunately, I don't have a remote for this. So that's about all I can do. Let's clean the hedge real quick. Clean the heads, I'm not going to get too crazy. You just take a Q tip with some ISA on it, and I'm going to clean the whole head. Yeah, I'm not even touching the actual playback heads yet. I'm just doing just the drum just to get any crap off of it. And as you can see, there is. Let's zoom in a little bit. And there is stuff coming off. Now the video, the heads that are in there are very fragile, so you don't want to just, you know, they're, they're going to grab some of the cotton. You don't want to rip them out or, or damage them in any way. You just want to gently go over them. While we're in here, let's do the tape heads, or I'm sorry, the audio heads. You'll notice there's I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but there's a head up here, and then there's a head down there. The bottom one is for tracking. It's a time code. And the top one is for audio. And then this is an erase head for video. The question is, if this is just a player, why the hell is there an erase head? I'm, you know, they'll have stuff left over from other models. You know, if this is the stripped down model that doesn't record, but there's one that's, you know, the next step up that does, they'll just make one, you know, mechanism and slap it in and just some of the part, you know, won't be used. But as cheap as this is, you would think that that would, they would be worrying about that. I mean, look at this, this, this pinch roller. It's not even on a real bearing or, I don't even know what that's on. Some kind of plastic job. <laughs> Not anymore. And you know, I haven't even tested the DVD. Let's make sure the DVD player works. So the only thing I could find was an old DirecTV remote, and it doesn't bring up anything on screen. 
menus, but I did find the manual for this. So let's just make sure the DVD actually works. And yeah, it's playing a DVD just fine. You can't fast forward through that. Oh my god, it's actually letting you fast forward through that? That's cool. Yeah, it's working. Cool. So even though that we knew that there was no input, there's no audio or video input in here, um, the only coaxial is an RCA plug and it's for digital audio out. Uh, so there's no tuner in here to record from. The only thing I thought it might be possible, and I really highly doubted it, but you never know, is uh, something to allow you to dub from DVD to VHS. And if that's the case, that would be the first VCR that I ever found that allowed you to do that. However, um, I did find the manual. Here it is. And it says right here, this unit does not have a recording function, so you must record a tape from another equipment in bad English. Um... So yeah, it has no recording function, it's just a player, but why does it have erase heads? So it kind of is weird. So anyway, um, it seems to be working just fine. The DVD works. All right, so let's get them both going. We got DVDs working. Switch it over to VHS, and VHS is working just fine. So again, just a player, but it might come in handy for somebody. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.